Right, so last time we went a little bit more over Blender 4.0, the new changes, stuff like that. And I left on a note where we were going to talk a little bit more about light and things that changed as well. And I feel like lighting is something that we haven't really talked about that much yet. There's a lot of theories behind it, a lot of, um, a lot, a lot of, a lot of things you can basically follow. Uh, but, but for starters, there are some technical stuff in Blender that we need to talk about, um, which I haven't shared yet. So I think we went over the basic lights and like the point, the point lights, sun, the spot, the area. All of these basically speak for themselves. Um, they, they do what they do, basically. So let me go into rendered view. And I have to start off by once again mentioning EV and cycles, right? There's a difference here what, that we're going to be exploring. And it is going to be about nodes, light nodes, right? So if we swipe this to the left and set this to the shader editor, we now have our object as the shader, right? But if I add a little light, area light, let's say, we get, well, we don't have the object anymore, but we have an empty node group. And there's no real option here to really add like a node to the light. But if we switch this over to cycles, we get a little button up top that says use nodes. All right, so that is a cycles thing. And let me set this to GPU. And let me go to rendered view. We are currently in rendered view. I'm gonna delete the default light. So this is the area light that I just added. And I can set this to the strength I want. And let's move this a little bit to the side so we can see what is going on here. Right, so light and nodes. What happens if we turn this on? Well, we basically get an emission shader, right? And this is something you are familiar with in the actual shader editor for objects, right? For the cube, we can delete the principle and we can add an emission shader. It's basically the same. This also emits light, has a strength, and um, it's just different. Right, so let me turn this back into a principal BSDF. And then for our light, there is a little bit of a magic thing we can do, right? And something that adds a lot of realism in some cases and can make your renders look a lot different, really. So basically what I've told you before is HDRIs are what make up most of our lights in, in larger environments, in outdoor scenes, stuff like that, indoor scenes as well. If we set this to an environment texture, and I open up my HDR, Whipple Creek, Kazibo. I keep coming back to that one. It's a very nice one. If you want something that has soft lights, but also nice shadows and, well, pretty much a lot of reflections going on, then I highly recommend using the Whipple Creek Kazibo. And you can download that, of course, from, I think it is HDRI Haven or now called Polyhaven. Uh, but the thing is, you may not want the green color. Let me start off with that. A very easy tweak. Let me go to, actually, let's keep it like this for a sec. And let me add a little shader. So today is going to be like how to optimize our scene regarding lighting and how to get better results. And don't get me wrong, this may not always be as super realistic as you're going to get, but we also want beautiful stunning results for our renders, right? So we have to combine realism with a little bit of magic. Okay, so let's give our object a bit more of a glossy and metallic look so we can see those reflections nicely. There we go. And now let's just turn that background off for a sec. Right, so now in the world tab, we have our HDRI. And what I usually do and what I recommend you to do as well is just select it and press Ctrl T every time. And now you can at least control the rotation of that HDRI. Okay. I'm not sure why my computer is lagging a little bit. Let me close down some programs real quick. There we go. Right, so what I usually do, if, if I like an HDRI, but I don't like the green colors like this, for example, if I want this to be a snow scene, right, or more of a sunset kind of scene, but I still like the, the lighting and the reflections from this one, I will just throw in Shift A, a huge saturation node there, and I'll just change the hue into whatever color I'm looking for. There we go. Quite easy, right? Now, if you want it darker, you can either turn down the strength or the value. Both work quite well. You can make it brighter as well there. Saturation, same thing. If you want it black and white, I've done that plenty of times, turn down the saturation. And another th trick I do 
let's say 75% of the time, I just hit Shift A and hello, search for a bright and contrast node. And I usually set my contrast a lot higher for the HDRI, which basically means that our whites are gonna get more bright, gonna emit more light, and our dark values are basically going to get a little bit darker as well. All right, so if I hide this, you can see that we get some nice contrast in that. And that is something that I like a lot. And you can do that with any HDRI, with any kind of value that you want. Now, obviously, if you have an object that is, let's say, Chrome, right? Let's make this object Chrome. Then you're going to see all of the reflections. And in that case, the high contrast may be too much, right? So it is dependent on your scene. But I have tried around a lot with it, with the high contrast and HDRIs, and they more often than not give me a better result when I'm rendering. Okay, so keep that in mind and play around with the value of the contrast between zero and one. It changes a lot of how your scene looks. Now, we only have a cube now, but if you have a large scene, believe me, it will change a lot. All right, so let's set this back to, well, let's keep this at one. And let's go to our object and let's turn the metallic value all the way down and the roughness up a little bit. And let's make this, let's make this black perhaps. All right, so we were talking about the lights, right? The area lights and the node system, right? So we have an emission now, and let's say we are still not getting the colors from the actual HDRI that we need. We're not getting the reflections. We're not getting the different kinds of, of light values. Well, what you can do is you can actually use a texture for your light source, right? So if we select it and press Ctrl T, you can immediately see, immediately see if I drag this closer, that we're getting a little pink kind of light. And you know what that means. It means we have a texture that is not found in Blender, right? So if you change this to a random texture, and I'm gonna find one right here. This is a moss texture that I used for reference a while ago, if I decrease this size, you can see that we're actually getting that image as a light emission. All right, so we are actually getting a very clear view of that of that image, right? So, well, blur that out, make the spreads a little bit bigger. There we go. We can even change the size to make everything a little bit bigger. And now you can already see that we're getting some reflections, some color, some light that are not even part of the scene. Right, and that can actually help out a lot if you have, um, well, if you have a boring scene, right? Sometimes you just want one object to be in the center and everything else you don't want to bother really modeling. So the stuff that usually would be there, like buildings on the side of a car, stuff like that, you don't want to model that. You just want that to come from, for example, an HDRI or a texture, right? The lighting from that, the reflections. So, that is when you can, for example, use your image planes, right? So if we select, for example, a cloud one, and or for example, this one, this is already giving us a much different vibe, all right? So it's very easy to fake reflections, fake lighting, and it looks quite nice. Much more interesting than having a plain, plain, plain light, pretty much one color, right? And even with a volumetric, this is gonna look even prettier. So if you add a little volume around the cube that the light can pass through, you'll get more colors, more, more vibrant stuff like that, right? So keep that in mind, your lights actually have nodes as well. And we can do anything in here that we do with shaders as well. Give this a noise texture, you name it, we have it here, right? So go nuts.